Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson and this is Business One. For each chapter, you will have a recorded lecture from myself. Uh, word to the wise, watch the lecture, pay attention to it. Although you read through the textbook, I will key in on the things that uh, will more than likely be on the test. So it's uh, advantageous for you to, uh, to watch the lecture uh, each week. Uh, now, not to say that you shouldn't read the textbook, because you should read the textbook as well. I'm not going to sit here and read the textbook to you, but we're going to go over some featured points, and it should help you out. Uh, we'll do this for every single chapter, and I think it's a very useful tool. helps to uh, diminish the digital divide. So as you see, at the uh, this electronic book that I have here, and I'm going to go through it, and, and you see there's a profile at the very beginning talking about an entrepreneur. I want you to read the profile. I'm not going to go over that uh, during the lecture, but I want you to read it on your own. It's a very good one. If there's one that's not so good, I'll let you know uh, during the lecture to skip it. Uh, I also want you to check out uh, the Name That Company. Uh, this is good. They talk about micro lending. So if you don't know what micro lending is, uh, that's a, a, a group or a company uh, or a group of companies that put together a program that say, hey, these individuals don't have enough credit, enough collateral to get loans. Let's give them uh, funding so that they can start their business or refuel their business. And uh, my mom's been part of, of a program that does that. Uh, here and uh, abroad in uh, countries such as Zambia, uh, which has worked out really well for them, and they've seen uh, it, it reap the benefits from, from other entrepreneurs. Uh, things that you need to key in on, uh, if I talk about terms and definitions, they quite possibly will be on the test. Uh, so business, business is any activity that seeks to provide goods and services to others while operating at a profit. And you, you want to operate at a profit, right? Uh, you don't want to operate at a loss, meaning that you're losing money, and you don't want to operate and just be in business just to be in business or barely to get by. You want to be able to make money to uh, take care of yourself and take care of your family. Uh, goods, uh, tangible products such as computers, food, clothing, cars, and appliances, right? So the trick about tangible goods when you get a question on that is that you can touch it. You can feel it. You can touch your computer. You can touch your phone. You can feel it. It's tangible. Uh, if you can't touch it or feel it, then it's probably not a tangible good. It's quite possibly something like a service. A service is not something you can touch. So if I come clean your carpets, uh, you can't touch the fact that I clean your carpets. But it's a service, but you know you look down and your carpets are clean. Uh, so services are intangible products uh, that, can be, that can't be held in your hands, such as education, health care, insurance, recreation, travel, and tourism, right? So uh, although you can hold your diploma in your hand, but you can't hold your education in your hand, that's being held uh, in your mind. So that's why it's something that's not a, a tangible good. Entrepreneur is a person who risks time and money uh, to start and manage a business. Now, just so you know, there are entrepreneurs that are within companies. Uh, but for the most part, especially here in the land of small companies uh, in Southern California and California altogether, uh, entrepreneurs, they risk time and money, right? So they're devoting their time. If it doesn't go right, then they, they pretty much lost that time. Uh, and they're also, risk, risk, also risking their money. They want to put the money into this business and they want to reap the rewards and benefits. A uh, couple financial terms, and that's what I like about business one. They touch on all of the aspects of business, uh, just uh, you know, not not all the way to you know to 100 degrees, but they they go like halfway, and then they give you the basis. So when you go to your other classes, you should have learned a little bit about each topic. So for instance, you learn about finance or accounting, you 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 see things about revenue, profit, loss, and things of that nature. So revenue is the amount of money a business takes in during any given period, right? So this is the money that comes in, but that has not accounted for money that goes out, right? If you look at profit, that accounts for money that's going out. Uh, this is the amount of money a business uh, earns above and beyond uh, what they spend, right? So if you make a million dollars, but you spend a million and ten dollars, then you're operating at a loss, and that's not a good thing. A loss is when a business expenses are more than its revenues, just like the scenario that I just described. All right, risk. And risk is a big thing. You, we all take risk all the time, but hopefully we're not taking a uneducated or um, you know, unnecessary risk. Uh, but the chance that an entrepreneur takes of losing time and money uh, from a, on a business that may not be profitable, it's quite possible that the business may close. We see closed businesses all the time. And you also have to look at something that we'll touch on later in the course, and is your opportunity cost. What could you have been doing with that time? So if you spent your money investing in a business, $20,000, but 
you know, that's, that's only part of it. You also lost the time, which means that you could have used the time that you invested in that business to be working somewhere for a private company or, or a corporation. Uh, standard of living, uh, you can go over that. Um, uh, Mary Kate and Ashley Olson, remember them from uh, Full House? Uh, well, qu quite interesting. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go get too far into it, but they've, they've built an empire. And uh, their business is worth over $1 billion, right? So, you know, that's not selling, uh, you know, videos from uh, synd uh, syndication versions of a uh, full house. They, they've they uh, come out with, you know, some clothing lines that stretch from, you know, moderate to uh, expensive, and, and they've done quite well. So they've, they've done well in, in creating and maintaining uh, their brand. So whoever you know, uh, got a hold of them and talked to them about business very early on, they did a good job. Uh, stakeholders, right? So quality of life, you, you look that one up on your own. Uh, stakeholders, you see this uh, little pie chart right there that talks about like who's a stakeholder. That's something that I'm, I'm pretty sure is going to be on the test. Uh, all the people who stand to gain or lose by the policies and activities of a business and what concerns the business needs to address. So there's a video posted in the modules uh, uh, talking about uh, stakeholders, so definitely watch that. Gives you a great perspective on what a stakeholder is. Uh, it's, it consists of stockholders, customers, surrounding community, environmentalists, uh, dealers, employees, all of these people make up stakeholders. So a stakeholder is not a stockholder. A stakeholder a stakeholder is someone who is affected by the business. A stockholder is someone who purchases stock uh, for, from the company, right? So I work for a publicly traded company. You can purchase a stock, but stockholder and stakeholder are not the same thing. But a stockholder is a stakeholder, right? But a stakeholder is not necessarily a stockholder, right? Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, email me. I'll clear it up for you. Uh, outsourcing, you must know this term. So contracting with other companies, uh, often in other countries, but not necessarily, that doesn't have to be, uh, to do some or all of the functions of a, fir uh, a firm uh, likes its, uh, uses its production and accounting task for, or such as that. So outsourcing just means that, so if I have a company and it's in Santa Ana, and you have a company and it's in Bell, and I say, I want you to do this portion of my business, like I want you to create the first portion of the snowboard, send them to me, then I'll do the designs. That is outsourcing. Offshoring is when you, you offshore uh, and outsource that business to someone that's not domestic, meaning they're in another country. That's offshoring. A lot of times people use those two terms uh, interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. Offshoring just means in another country. Outsourcing just means that you're getting somebody else to do it. A nonprofit organization, uh, you know, don't get a misconception that nonprofit organizations don't make money because they do. Red Cross makes a lot of money. Uh, an organization whose goals do not include making personal profit for its owners and organizers. It's not their goal, but they make a lot of money because they get a lot of donations and things of that nature. So uh, you just have to know and understand that although it's nonprofit or not for profit, it doesn't mean that they are not profitable. Uh, progress assessment. I want you guys to go through each progress assessment, ask those questions, and then see if you can answer them. So the difference between revenue and profit, something that we already went over. Uh, what is risk and how is it related to profit, right? They say uh, no risk, no reward, things like that, right? So so go over those progress assessments. It, it's good to always, I know uh, you're all busy individuals, uh, but it is good to go through a book and kind of touch on the key things that they have, like the summary, the progress questions, stuff like that. It really will help reemphasize the things that I'm, I'm speaking about and will help you get a good grade on your quizzes, tests, and uh, in the class altogether. I want you to read the spotlight on small business uh, yourself, uh, talking about networking of minority businesses. And networking is a big thing. That's one thing um, that I guess is on my list of things that I need to do better at. Uh, you know, and it's a, it's a long list, but I'm, I'm working my way down it, right? Uh, using uh, my, my, my small hammer to hit the big iceberg and, and get a lot better at the things that I need to uh, get better at. <clears throat> so factors of production, uh, factors of production, land or natural resources, right? So land, natural resources, trees, you know, things like that. Uh, labor, uh, that's going to be the workers. Those are going to be the individuals who are actually uh, completing the job. Uh, capital. <clears throat> this includes machines, tools, buildings, <clears throat> things of that nature. So if you have a big copy or a multifunctional device, that will be capital, capital expenditure, capital purchase. Uh, entrepreneurship, we already talked about that, and knowledge. Knowledge is becoming, you know, a really big deal or has already become a really big deal. So think about it. Uh, IT, uh, so prevalent in companies these days that the power goes out and the computers go out. There's absolutely nothing that I can do 
uh, during the day for work. I can sit there, I can clean up my desk, and then I can just twiddle my thumbs, thumbs and sit there. All right, so the five factors of production as the book's definition, land, land and other natural resources uh, used to make homes, cars, and other products, like I said, uh, you know, trees and things of that nature. Uh, labor, uh, people have always been an important resource in producing goods and services, but many people are now being replaced by technology. So let me give you an example. Uh, you go to Home Depot, what do you see, right? You, you go to checkout, you see self-checkout. Well, there used to be five, t you know, people at the checkout, you know, to, to, to help assist you. They took four of those people out and they kept the person who knew the technology, right? So four people either got displaced and went to another department in Home Depot or lost their job. Uh, capital includes machines, tools, buildings, and other means of manufacturing. I already talked about that. Entrepreneurship uh, talked about that as well. And then knowledge, uh, information technology has revolutionized business, hasn't it? Uh, you know, you always have your emails on your phone, on your tablet, everywhere. You have VPN, you work from home, uh, things of that nature. Some say it's better, some people say it's not. Uh, making it possible to quickly determine wants, needs, and uh, respond uh, with desired goods and services. <clears throat> All right, so more progress uh, assessment questions. Uh, be sure to ask yourself those. Uh, what are some of the advantage of, of working for others? Well, I'll tell you some of the advantages of working for others. It's, it's the fact that you know you're going to get a paycheck. It's the fact that you have uh, sick time that's available. It's the fact that you have vacation time. If you own your own business, uh, if you take a vacation and you're the only one that can run the business, you are just not going to get paid, right? So it, it's not uh, as easy, but it's it's also, you know, obvious, obvious perks that say things like, uh, you know, the fact that you don't have to share your profit with anybody else. Uh, business environment, uh, the economic and legal environment, technological environment, competitive environment, social environment, and global business environment. And we already kind of touched on a few of these, but the business environment is the surrounding factors uh, that either help or hinder the development of the business, right? So it can either help it or it can hinder it, which is a bad thing put in the wrong direction. Uh, the technological environment, information technology, databases, barcodes, the internet, uh, social environment, diversity, uh, demographic changes, family changes, Competitive environment, um, customer service, who has the best customer service, keep the customers, retain them, stakeholder recognition, uh, employees, employee service, uh, and concern for the environment, right? So a lot of companies are doing things, partnering up with uh, environmentalists, uh, but not always necessarily because they want to uh, just do it because they should go green and do it. It's just because, you know, uh, you'll get kickbacks from the government, you get rebates, things like that. Uh, economic and legal environment, uh, freedom of ownership, uh, contract laws, things of that nature, right? So be sure to go back over and familiarize yourself with those as well. Uh, skip over that. So that's just reading. Be sure to uh, check out the economic and legal environment. I'll read this little story right here. It talks about how hard it, uh, or how much harder it is to start a business in India than it is in the United States. Things are very different in in, in different countries. So some countries have you know some <clears throat> good things and some come in those same countries have some bad things everybody's got pros and cons all things have pros and cons as well uh, more about the technological environment so for instance uh, you know you're, you're expected especially in management you're expected to answer these emails at all times because you're always connected and you have your phone if we need you you know we'll text you this this and that so it's always on your mind and some people may say that that does not help with the work-life balance, meaning that your work is overtaking the balance of, of, of your life, and then that can create other problems that you really don't want. Uh, ethical decisions, uh, so we'll talk about that throughout the class. Uh, we'll talk about the Starbanks Oxley Act or uh, SOX compliance and, and how that's used and how some people, I'm sure some of you have, you know, have had to use that within your, your work um, work history and some of you don't even know the know that you've actually uh, been using it but you have to make ethical decisions uh, I've been you know forced to make certain decisions uh, that may you know have hindered uh, my, my career path but it's been the, the more ethical decision and also will help me not to be the fall guy when things do not occur the way that uh, that they typically said that they would so technology, just make sure you know this definition, everything from phones and uh, copiers to computers, medical imaging devices, personal digital assistance, read that, all of that. That's, those things are all technology. A phone, your phone is a computer. It is, right? It's doing everything that a computer can do, so therefore it is a computer. Social media and business, it's all over business. You cannot have a business without having a YouTube account, a LinkedIn account, 
uh, Facebook account, like us on Facebook or Twitter account, you know, all of these different things. And, and you have to have somebody at your company that manages this in case things do not go appropriately. Like, so for instance, I'll tell you a good one. I, I was looking up uh, this hotel to see if it was a good place to stay. And then uh, somebody had a complaint. And I saw that the manager fixed the complaint and then he posted what occurred in the conversation between him and the individual. So it's showing resolution. So although things happen, things go wrong, right? Uh, although things happen, they went back and rectified it. So I don't, you know, if I'm looking, I said, yeah, I'll stay there. I don't have a problem with that because they went back and they fixed whatever the problem was. So check out that uh, story on social media and business. And another thing, you know, think about think about LinkedIn. Uh, Working for a company, I had two individuals that I had worked with before. I didn't have their cell phone numbers. I wanted to hire them. I had 70 open positions. And I said, hey, I talked to the HR lady. I said, look them up on LinkedIn. Hear their names. Find them. Interview them. And let's hire them. And it went just like that. Uh, great tool. Great thing to use uh, to, to, you know, to, to link up with people. And then also, you know, do some recruiting uh, via uh, the human resources department. Uh, productivity is the amount of output you generate uh, given the amount of input, meaning like your hours work. So how much output do you have uh, relative to how many hours you work that day? Uh, E-commerce is buying and selling of goods over the internet, right? Uh, so how many of you guys uh, raise your hand, or do a, a mental raise your hand, you don't have to raise your hand, uh, but... Um, how many guys buy things off of the internet, right? It's 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 the minority that doesn't per make purchases on the internet. Now my mom, she won't, but she'll call me and say, hey, let me use your credit card to purchase something on the internet because I don't want to put my credit card information on there. I guess she's the smarter of the two of us uh, in that scenario. Uh, database electronic storage uh, uh, file for information, right? Where do you store, store all your file and your information and things of that nature? Uh, be sure that you know uh, what a database is. Uh, then competitive environment. It's very competitive in our environment, uh, whether it be recruiting people, whether it be uh, company to company. Uh, things are getting better, faster, bigger, stronger every single day. Uh, empowerment. Uh, so uh, giving frontline workers the responsibility, authority, freedom, training, and equipment they need to respond quickly to customer requests, right? I don't want all of my people, you know, coming to me for every single thing because then I can't get anything done, right? You need to empower people. You don't need to micromanage them. Let them get out there and let them do their job. Are they going to make mistakes? Yes. Is making a mistake a big deal? Not if it's not cat catastrophic and, and it's nothing you can't fix, right? I, my, my joke is I have a quota. I make about 17.5 mistakes a day. That was that was just one of them. So uh, don't be so afraid to, uh, to, uh, to make mistakes. It's all part of life. It's all part of doing business things. Things happen. It's, it's how you respond to that mistake, how you go about uh, fixing it and moving forward. That's always the, the, the best way to approach it. And, uh, you know, so don't be just so lax and just say, I'll, I'll make whatever mistake I want to. But uh, but you have to figure out a way to, to kind of ease your mind and not think about it for forever. <clears throat> Greening. Uh, this is the trend towards sharing energy and producing products that cause uh, less harm to the environment, right? So we want to go green. And that term greening, that's, you know, the textbook, that's their term. But um, you could call it go green, anything that you want, just things that help the environment. Like I joke around with people, I have an electric car, uh, you know, and I have solar panels, right? So I'm doing my part attempting to grow, go green, uh, trying to recycle, not use plastic bags, use the reusable bags, things like that. And uh, it helps the environment and, and it also may help your, your pocketbook as well. Uh, more progress assessment questions, uh, be sure to uh, ask those of yourself or, or your classmate or a friend or possibly even, uh, you know, parent, spouse, whoever, your dog. Um, thinking green, so always be sure to read these. Uh, thinking green, uh, getting involved uh, personally. Uh, so th just think about that. I have this book. Uh, I do have the, the hard copy textbook, but I have the electronic textbook. Uh, so you see it's a, a more and more... Uh, electronic copies of textbooks and things of that nature as uh, as time goes on right as we progress there are there are more options and we need to use our resources uh, uh more effectively and look, use those resources that come um you know very readily accessible to our environment so if you live in california arizona vegas we get a lot of sun right why not use it and and have solar panels right uh if you, you live in palm springs you go by and you have the windmills right why not use that wind for electricity things of that nature right so you just have to be uh smart about the way that we're doing things uh <clears throat> 
So these are these different industries. I want you to read that on your own. Lodging and services, amusement and recreation services, personal services, health services. Check those out. Might be a career that you're currently in or that you would like to be in in the near or distant future. Uh, more progress assessment questions. Uh, be sure to, to read those, reemphasize them. And if you don't know the answer, go back in the text and find the answer. And now we come to the summary. So this is something that you're going to do on your own. So I'll do the video. You guys listen to key points that I'm keying in on. A lot of times the key points are the ones that are going to be on the quiz and or test. But I want you to go through uh, this summary. And the summary gives you a good synopsis on what the chapter was about, uh, what you should be knowing in terms of uh, understanding business. Uh, now, there are other things because you do have to read the chapter. Don't just skip the chapter and go straight to the summary. Uh, but, but this is a good summary to kind of sum it up. Uh, check out the keywords, and if you have to reference back and go back to the page, uh, that's good. Check out those key terms, know what you're doing. Uh, if you have enough time, you can look at uh, critical thinking. And if you really have enough time, I would probably say uh, developing workplace skills would come before the critical thinking. So lots of tools in this book. Uh, it's, a, it's a great book. Uh, it's good foundation basis uh, for all of the business courses that you would take uh, in this wonderful major. So uh, that's chapter one in a nutshell. Uh, the next time you pop open the next video, uh, well, you'll watch your supplemental videos and there'll be instructions on that. But uh, the next video that, that I'll post of myself will be the chapter two lecture. And as always, uh, have a good day and a great week.